call the meeting to order and Quinell City Council recognizes that we meet on the traditional territory of the Latako Dene Nation. Uh, with respect uh, to the agenda, uh, we have uh, an addition to J1 in front of you. It's uh, an early recommendation coming forward from uh, the Policy and Bylaw com uh, Committee pertinent uh, to that piece of correspondence that I'll speak to then. And then K1, uh, we have the actual report. So the agenda item uh, is there, uh, and uh, the report's now in front of you, and we'll speak to that at that time. Other than that, I think that's it. That's everything. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Councillor Goulet, so moved. Councillor Vick, second. Questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. And then adoption of the minutes of November the 3rd. Uh, motion direct, uh, sorry, Councillor Rudenberg, uh, Councillor uh, Elliott, any questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? We have a delegation tonight. Look how socially distanced they are from each other. <laughs> and I believe you've had your training on uh, how to come forward and uh, to do your presentation. So as soon as uh, Gina gets set up, uh, then we'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you for being with us tonight. For Council's edification, because this is the first time for some folks, uh, so tonight is the presentation by the uh, Downtown Business Association, uh, and then we'll go through the process. So there's a request uh, in here for duration, for boundary expansion, et cetera. Uh, right now, this is an information gathering for us. Uh, staff will send out a, a flow of the process for the bylaw approval, but we'll be able to deal with the requests in the bylaw approval process. So tonight, feel free to ask questions for clarification, but we're not actually doing the work uh, tonight of the bylaw renewal. Okay. So Gilbert, Mike, uh, who's leading off? Uh, I'll start. Okay, super. Thank you. Floor is yours. You need to use a mic and you need, need to introduce yourselves and all of that fun stuff. All right. Hi. Thanks for having us. I'm uh, Mike Briggs, uh, president of the Downtown Association. Um, a lot of you may know, know me as the Panago guy. Um, so we're here tonight to uh, request renewal of our bylaw for funding for the our business association. Um, we've uh, included a letter um, explaining why we're looking for a shorter uh, period this time. We're looking, hoping to renew for two years rather than our last uh, seven-year um, one. Um, the reason we're gone with two years is um, we're looking in the future to request a, an increase in funding uh, but didn't think that now was the time to do that uh, with COVID and um, we don't know exactly um, how much we will need to run the events that we're going to try and run over the next couple of years uh, which we do have some funding for already um, but the funding is only for one year for for the events um, also we've included um, a map of the um, increase to our boundaries that we'd like to make. Um, uh, we've sent a delegation to talk to these, these, the people in these areas and they're interested in joining. Um, and we've also uh, included uh, our two-year budget as well. And uh, um, Gilbert will do a presentation about our uh, recent branding and, and stuff as well. Uh, yeah. I I'm Gilbert Chotel, one of the directors of the Quinell Downtown Association. Um, as Mike has mentioned, we do, we did take a look at the map. Um, there's a few areas that seem to make sense to add to the downtown. Um, there's a couple businesses in those areas that feel that they have, um, you know, they, they can have both input for the downtown for the betterment of the downtown association um, and are a good fit as well. A um, couple of them, it's just um yeah i think it should the map should speak to itself of course there's still a, a bit of a jog in the map uh mostly due to the government-owned buildings there um over the last year um we have undergone some branding um changes in which is the powerpoint that's up there um i guess we'll, we'll run through it fairly quickly we found um the downtown association we needed to renew our brand um, what have we been running with has been something that's been um, with us for a few years now um, and if we can go to the next slide and I oh 
load over here. There we go. There we go. So, um, yeah, um, we've looked at our brand and we understand that, you know, there's a lot of power to your brand. And there you can see it. There's a few examples of some brands I think most of you should be familiar with. Um, and most of them, you know, we recognize who they are without even seeing their words, like the Pepsi logo, um, you know, Chevy Jeep, Nike Swoosh. These are all brands that we all recognize um, without even their wording. It's interesting that Doritos has just launched a campaign where they've actually dropped the Dorito word from their brand, where they've just run with the triangle. And in their effort to, to, to increase their branding um, and to get the recognition. Um, if we go over, um, we talk about brand success and some of the failures. And we've highlighted kind of um, here, we've got Harley Davidson has been a very successful brand in what they've done. However, um, if you look at where, where they stand with their brand, they've failed to see changes in the marketplace. Um, they've branded, you know, their, their product into a lifestyle. Um, and they've done that very successfully where they even have people tattooing their brand on their, on their bodies. But as they've gone through and as the world and the market has changed, um, they've failed to see as their target audience has gotten older and older. Um, whereas now the average age of a Harley Davidson owner is uh, very quickly becoming a senior. Um, and that's an issue for them and they're seeing their sales drop now. And we use those similarities and to see where we need to sit as a downtown so we don't fall into that same brand, um, that same type of failure where we're marketing to a demographic that's no longer going to be our customer in the future. Um, so I've, you know, if you Google hipster biker, um, you end up with a guy on a Triumph. Um, it's, I mean, I highlight Triumph because I ride a Triumph, so I'll just, <laughs> I'm somewhat biased there. <laughs> I'm not old enough for a Harley. I have ridden them, but not. So um, as we continue, so we don't want to fall into that trap where our demographic is falling. So that takes us to what our brand was in the downtown. Um, a downtown that makes people proud. And, you know, and we've got, there's Bruce, our former pr president, uh, valued member of the downtown, has been with us many years. And it is a downtown that makes him proud. And I think a lot of us around here, our downtown does make us proud. But as, as our demographics and change and who we want to attract, we realize that those people, the new people that are going to drive the economy, um, they're, they don't have a reason, they don't have that emotional connection to the downtown that a lot of us sitting around here do have that have been around uh, the community since the 70s or even previous to that. So, and then we kind of look at what, what has lately been making the news and wondering is, is this what makes us proud of our downtown. Now the interesting thing about these photographs is none of these photographs here are of Quinnell, but um, when I googled Quinnell looking for images, um, at least one of these photographs was attributed to Quinnell within a newspaper article. So this is, when we looked at that, is, is this what we want to be showing as our downtown? So we don't want to, so we want to build a positive brand that helps us to combat this type of negative publicity that we may be getting. So that brings us to our next generation of consumers. The consumers that aren't in Quinnell their whole lives. The consumers of um, tomorrow's generation, which is an anywhere type generation. People that are educated, people that are moving, people that are living in the digital age where they choose a place to live um, based on where they want to live as opposed to many of us have chosen Quinell to live because that's where either we grew up or where their jobs were. But jobs are now very transient um, where um, you can work from home as we know all through the last six months with COVID that's um, all of our jobs have changed where we're now a lot more able to move and live where we want to as opposed to where we need to. Um, 
the new generation, the, uh, the next generation, uh, they value their experiences over material items, they value belonging and community, and they value social responsibility. So we want to move our brand to attract those people. So then we looked at what, what was unique for our downtown. Um, we have a unique geography, uh, the variety of our retailers within where we are, um, particularly the pedestrian accessible environment that we have. Um, the downtown through the years have had some, a number of accessibility projects that we've done. Uh, we're also very unique in the sense that we have a lot of parking. Um, and we have a lot of accessible areas. Most of us are on one floor. Um, where you can easily enter. We have gathering spaces. Um, we, of course, have our unique people that are downtown. Um, most of the businesses, um, even when they're franchises, they're owned by a local person. So you, you can, it's not uncommon to walk into a shop and be able to speak directly to the owner. Um, and of course, we do still have our history, which we're still proud of within our community. So taking those together, we worked up to what we want to highlight and our tag new tagline is walk talk and shop where we can experience those things we we're, we're highlighting the people we're highlighting the quality you can walk around it's um you can shop you can meet people and that's you know we and i think those images kind of highlight what we want to show of what our downtown is and that brings us into our branding, our new logos, um, our logo featuring our geography, which of course is the water on the two rivers where we're situated between. Of course, the, um, the walking bridge is always something that people associate with Quinnell. And then we've broken it down into an easy to recognizable queue and breaking down the downtown just to abbreviations, just to make it quicker for people to, to see and recognize when you see those words when you see those symbols, you're thinking downtown. And of course, we also came up with some new colors. Um, it's not an accident that these colors also fall closely to complement the city branding um, because, you know, we appreciate the strong branding that the city has done, um, both locally and in, in the province and internationally. So it will only make sense that we work with with the city and we, we provide a brand that complements the city's brand. So uh, where it becomes, you know, it's in our nature to walk, talk and shop so we can work in the same areas. And yeah, from there we're just working on, um, as Mike mentioned in the future and right now we're working more consistent social media um, advertising. We've undergone quite a bit of work um, planning out our year where we're promoting the downtown promoting all our businesses within the downtown um, so everything has that same message um, and as well as in our print advertising our audio and uh, our promotions that we are trying to fit and everything goes through the lens of our new brand and our hashtag of course so watch those four contests so Anything to add, Mike? Um, no, I think you covered it all. Okay. Yep. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, floor is open for council. Comments or questions? Councilor Paul. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for your, um, for your presentation. Uh, excellent, and the downtown is looking great. Um, I got a question about uh, that hashtag and the, and the abbreviation. Why would they have not, or why would you have not gone with DNTN rather than DWTN. Is it because DNTN was maybe taken? The DNTN says downtown, but DWTN says Dwitten. I'm just wondering. If that's what the branding people came up with? <laughs> oh, I, you had a consultant, uh, right? We've used that answer. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't want to belabor it, but it just it just puzzled me, and, and I noticed it. I, I actually I actually wondered the same thing when, when when we got it, but it was actually the branding people that came up with that hashtag for us. So. Yeah. Okay, puzzling. Um, just a comment on on uh, Gilbert, where you were going with um, the the pride in the downtown, and um, every day 
I find myself going to the Weather Network, and I don't know if that's a throwback from my farming background or the fact that I'm a snowmobiler, probably more in line with snowmobiling. But when I go to the, net, the Weather Network, um, there's a little box that comes up underneath, and there's a question. And it says, uh, is Quinell a good place to live? And when you click on that, guess what comes up? Is this thing about the fact that we're the third or the fifth most dangerous community in Canada? And that really bothers me. And I, I hope that we can do something to fix that because it's certainly not true. So again, Councillor Paul, I really wish you would stop holding these things to make these announcements in council chambers. If you've got that question, ask. We've got a communications clerk who can actually pursue that and figure it out. So, you know, staff, city manager, if you can make sure that uh, our communications clerk can take a look at that. So uh, all it is is trolling where you're coming from, where your IP address is, and asking you the question and popping a Google News item up is probably all it's doing. So, but we can certainly pursue so, that. So, but what you're telling me is that you'd like a report or a, a no, memo? No, I'm not saying that at all. You can pick up the phone to the city manager and say, "Gee whiz, I wonder why this is happening. Can you have somebody look at it?" So, <laughs> anyway, uh, have you got any other comments uh, for these guys? Okay, thank you. Um, I've got Councillor Elliott. Thank you guys for being here and thanks so much for the for the work on the the rebranding i know how uh how much goes into it and you know we we worked really hard on on ours and i'm really glad that uh that you're kind of uh, piggybacking on that as far as the colors and things it's it, us working together is just going to be uh, more helpful thank you for uh noting that there's lots of parking downtown <laughs> i mean this is something we've all got to work on together but i think i think the working together thing is is what i'm trying to get across as far as the the colors the rebranding it ties into our rebranding um but then the challenges of that you mentioned about um whether you're going on youtube or whatever kind of uh thing on google i think that we i would hope that we can work together and reach out to our communications department as well because we have to start getting the, the right message out we've been working on that a lot here but I just had that that conversation last week with our communications department on all the hard work that we've done and still there's some negative connotations that that come up so it has to do with all the al algorithms and what's being hit on by people but I'm hoping that if we work together and try and straighten and they're they're working on these algorithms and I've set up web pa web pages before and put in keywords and things like there's a lot of work to do but I know you guys are doing it and if we can do it together I, I think that it's going to help help all of us so thanks for the hard work looks great thank you Mitch did you Councillor Vic thanks fellas great presentation um, I just wanted to make a couple comments uh, and if you want to elaborate further to what I'm going to comment on please do uh, the boundary change I think was wise for the BIA to to pursue it, sh it shows the the strength of the association. I think uh, it's it's encouraging uh, more membership interest, and I think it speaks to the health of the organization that people would well like to be included. So I really appreciate your efforts with that. I know that was there was some effort there um, regarding the future um, pertaining to your two year uh, renewal versus a five or seven year renewal. Um, is part of that to do with part of it is uh, as Mike was saying what to do with COVID related concerns with uh, uh, the, the future and, and, and cost and whatnot. Um, are, there, are there examples of sort of events that in the future could be on the agenda for, to share with the community that are different than what there are today? Yes. Um, our plan right now is um, to go with the revitalization of the stage in Spirit Square, um, having um, live entertainment every Tuesday night along with uh, hopefully some food vendors as well uh, to try and draw not just the people from the train but the public to come downtown and make Tuesday night the downtown Quenelle night um, and so we have secured funding f for that from um, the Northern Initiative Trust people uh, for the first year to pay for the entertainment uh, but after that we do we don't have the funding um, so which is one of the reasons we wanted to 
we want we we don't know exactly how much that's going to cost so we didn't want to propose an increase to our bylaw without having something to back it up um, and then the other thing um, was to uh, increase the the uh, art walk um, that we did uh, this year with uh, um, the art gallery um, and make that into a larger event to try and draw people in as well okay Councillor Rinberg Thank you. Um, it's always great to see how BIAs are evolving. Um, and uh, you know, the two-year renewal piece, that's a really unique solution to the current situation. And I think that's really forward thinking of your, of your executive to understand that your businesses don't necessarily want to take that extra hit of an increased tax levy right now. And I think that they'll appreciate that you know, over the next couple of years. And, uh, as every VIA is struggling with how they're going to do their events right now because a lot of the, what brings people to your to your core is your events. So um, recognizing that, um, I look forward to seeing how things unfold over the, the, the next couple of years for all the VIAs and especially with our downtown core because you guys have put a lot of time and effort into creating an atmosphere where people want to come back and visit again. So thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Runge. Yes, thank you. Thanks for the presentation. Sorry about being late. Um, I just want to say, you know, your BIA stands as a beacon for a lot of the BIAs here in Quinell. They look up to you guys. They take a lot of your ideas. They move up with them. So I'm just hoping that we can continue on. And like I've said to uh, Councillor uh, Vic before, if there's any way to consider uh, more integration with the other BIAs to pull them in with this, uh, you know, I'm I'm all I'm behind that because I think uh, you guys have a a potion choice of what you're doing that's really beneficial to Quinell. So uh, I'd like to see all the other BIAs, you know, kickstart and join you or, uh, you know, come up with very similar ideas. So thank you. Uh, thanks. So I, I don't have anybody else on my speakers list. Uh, just a couple of things. I, th you know, I think the partnership that we've had as a city with the Downtown Association has been critical to the success over the last little while and Gilbert your comments about you know how strong our branding has been and contextualizing the rebranding of the downtown within that I think our branding as a community has been strong because the downtown association and other associations vested in it as well and made it work and I think the partnerships around Spirit Center you know some of the initiatives we've got uh, is really strong too and I'm excited uh, you know notwithstanding COVID and whenever we come out of this current situation you know but the grant we got for the walking bridge as another hosting venue you know, improving the lighting and the safety around that area and attracting people downtown at night a little bit more fits as well when that section of our trail is lit. Uh, the uh, interconnector project proceeding and getting our, that bench, that Carson front, you know, read all free of that traffic, you know, fingers crossed with the new government. It's going to be one of our first conversations with them of continuing to advance that project. So I think you know the vitality of our downtown is only going to get stronger uh, for a whole variety of reasons and the partnership we have with your association is is one of those key reasons uh, the other piece uh, Mike on your comment about the live after five program we we do have a number of hotels signing on for the first time ever onto the hotel tax uh, or we're kind of one hotel shy of getting there and that's one of the things we've been pitching to them as well as the, the kind of ongoing support of funding uh, for those kinds of attraction events where it's late enough in the day and it's a good headliner that people will actually come in and stay uh, as well uh, so the two-year window gives us the opportunity to kind of lock that in as to whether your members are picking it up or that hotel tax picks it up or what that proportion is so I think as others have said it's it's a pretty smart move uh, uh, to just hedge uh, against that notwithstanding the bylaw work that has to be done two years from now right the one question I do have for you though is the paddle wheel signs uh, because now they're not on brand <laughs> and so uh, as you know we're doing all of our sign uh, refreshing and uh, that's going to deepen we have another piece of that coming forward tonight for grant for the riverfront trail our gateway signs uh, will be going up uh, pretty soon here so uh, if, if, 
if it's a, a kind of a contentious issue, you can leave it alone. But if you've talked about it and have a game plan, it would be interesting to know what the thought is. Because it's not, it doesn't fit with this, right? So. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it hasn't yet come up to ours. I mean, we're, we're bringing it on piece by piece. Um, the, um, the paddle wheel signs still, I mean, I don't know how old they are right now, but I think they're, in our mind, they're still fairly fresh in terms of when they were put on. And I do realize that they're not quite on brand at the moment. Um, but that being said, there's a considerable amount of investment to replace those signs. So at the moment, it's not on our uh, agenda to look at. That's not saying that it won't be in the future. And I think it's one another one of those partnerships where you know Lindsay uh, is the lead for our grant writing. I I think we're going to be another couple of waves of COVID relief and economic transition grants. And so to your point, Gilbert, if we can capitalize that to make sure that it's an integrative presence that we have and we can do it with outside money, it might be worth us taking a look at that. There so are definitely some of us who would like to see those signs go away. <laughs> and, and I've heard that over the years yeah. as well. So, and, and I think something that depicts the walking bridge or something that depicts kind of where you're going, as you guys have said, like, you know, we're, we're going to be infused with our history. And this is one of the things I think people don't understand. And, and Gilbert, in your presentation, you know, you've mentioned it. You know, a big part of the grant we got for the Riverfront Trail is to actually dig into our history, our Aboriginal history there. We've got a, you know, we're investing in the Museum Visitors Centre. We're going to be infused in our history, but you're right, the attractors, the speaking to people, etc., has to be vested in the present. And I think that's really the key is to find that, that balance of that. So, so let's have this just as an ongoing dialogue is to see if we can find somebody else's money uh, to, to help make that uh, so that we're integrated on that. So, okay. So thank you both uh, very much. And staff will bring forward the appropriate uh, report at the right time, and then we'll advance this. And then the extension folks will be you know, part of the vote uh, for uh, the two-year renewal of the bylaw. So thanks very much. Okay, Stay you, safe you. and sane out there. Yep, thank thanks. you. So while Ms. Albers gets that set up, uh, just an info uh, on the uh, Caribou Regional District Board highlights. It's for information only. Uh, the only thing I would point out in here, and I sent uh, Council an email when this occurred, uh, is the uh, COVID uh, grants uh, program, the Community Economic Recovery Infrastructure Program for the CRD. They did do a support uh, submission for Mount Timothy at half a million and Troll at a hundred thousand and that was at the request of those two mountains so it wasn't that they were discriminating it was what those two resorts wanted to advance uh, for us here for Troll it's to accommodate uh, more of the in outside gathering so I think they want to put a couple of yurts out and things like that because that's what they're being forced to do is to have people out and around their main facility more uh, and then as noted in here, uh, they referred uh, the compressor and header trench replacement at the Cornell Twin Arenas back to us, which we've dealt with in order for the CRD grant application for the Anaheim Lake uh, Airport to be as clean as possible because of the strategic nature of that request. So, uh, so that's the only thing I'd point out uh, is that was a piece of work that was done down there. Any questions on the board highlights report? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the finance, uh, Financial Sustainability and Audit Committee report. Uh, Councillor Elliott. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is from our most recent meeting on November 3rd. Uh, so a few things that were discussed. The property tax notice reminders have been sent out to all of those that have missed the deadline. Uh, the snow budget is something that's being monitored carefully as usual, and this is always an interesting time as people get to the end of the year and still uh, we're working on the current budget and it looks like there's not much money left and they start uh, losing their minds that we've still got months to go. But there's lots of, uh, lots of work that they're doing as far as the snow removal. Um, and just, I mean, it's a science to stay on top of it. I think today is one of those examples when I had a few people complaining to me that the plows weren't out and stuff. But I mean, we could have spent a lot of money doing that. But when it's going to be 10 degrees or 12 degrees, let her melt and let it do its own thing. 
Um, and to that point, uh, the, the city boulevards, they're going to be watching those. Typically, those get uh, done up in the springtime, but we'll just see if that's one of the cost savings that we can look at as far as uh, just, just letting them melt out. Um, and we were looking at, uh, staff has been looking at uh, replacing this specific sand that they've been using, which is a compound at, at, that uh, it's... Yeah, well, whatever. It's a special sand, yeah, that's washed and all this kind of stuff. To, to, yeah, that's exactly what it is, to remove the dust. So the cost savings, they haven't really noticed any difference with using the washed sand to uh, relieve the dust downtown. So we're going to go back and, and try and save some money as far as that goes, too. Um, the, stat, the tax shifting scenarios and the effect on the residential properties were talked about and council is currently working uh, on a policy to bring light industrial taxation levels to the business rate. Uh, the committee also discussed other options in case of another mill closure. So that's something that's in that we're looking at all the time and as well as the airport and the challenges and where we're going with that. Um, that's self-explanatory as we've talked about that a lot. So I'd move versus, no. And then I do have a recommendation moved by Councillor Goulet and seconded by myself and resolved that the Financial and S Sustainability Committee recommends to Council that staff continue snow operations as required and to use the funds in the snow reserve to cover any shortage in the snowfall budget. And that was carried. So I'd move receipt to the report. Do you want to move the, the, the recommendation? Move recommendation the recommendation first. Councillor Goulet second the recommendation. Any questions or comments? The only thing I would ask council, and it did come up at this meeting and by happenstance came up this morning in my own breakfast conversation with my wife where she said to me, how can you guys be running out of your snow budget and hasn't even started winter yet, right? Uh, we have to keep reminding the public that our year is January 1st to December 31st. So when we hit the fall season, we've expended a lot of our budget in the last full winter. Uh, and then when you get hit with something like this, where it starts hitting you uh, in October and then again in November, uh, that's why it's problematic. But it always seems to confuse people when we talk and the snow is just coming back that uh, somehow we're run out of our snow budget. So, okay. Uh, Councilor Rudenberg. Thank you. So this recommendation, is that just basically to reinforce what you've just said? No, we need an actual recommendation to use the reserve that we've set aside. Oh, okay. Right? So to tap into the reserve so that we can just keep the snow operations going. So it's a requirement. Okay. okay. I just don't recall doing that before. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because we didn't, I think we've only done it once before, right? Um, yeah, we've only done it once uh, before, so. Okay, any other questions or comments on that? Okay, all in favor? Any opposed? Uh, and the report is received in the agenda, so. Okay, uh, next, uh, the Executive Committee, Councillor Vic. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've written kind of a novel here, so I'll just try and um, zip through and just capture some of the highlights because I'm sure everyone's already reviewed this. Um, I'll first say that, wow, this, uh, we had a lot in this meeting. It was an action-packed meeting, lots of information to disseminate. Um, First, uh, I'll review the engagement uh, part of our meeting, uh, which uh, we discussed a, a really neat concept where um, we're going to be focusing a little bit more on different ways of engaging the public. One, video is a, is a good way that, is, that gets traction, especially on social media. We're going to try uh, an idea where we tie um, uh, the council column with a short video to support the council column. And evidence of that is the budget column, which is supported by a short budget video. So we're going we're gonna to focus on, on that sort of type of engagement as we move forward into the year and hopefully uh, get a few more eyeballs looking at what we're doing. Um, then we, uh, we had uh, Housing Coordinator Anna Rankin and Director Turner come and discuss uh, sort of the housing situation in Quinell and we learned a, a tremendous amount about the situation in our community with uh, the dire need for housing of all sorts, uh, specifically uh, more higher density uh, accommodations. Uh, well, I'll draw our attention to a, a very interesting idea that I hope comes to fruition soon um, in, in that we're going to be putting a link on our city website or we're going to propose a link to go on the website giving community members uh, feedback 
in the form of a survey uh, when they moved to our community on how they found the housing situation. What were they looking for? Where did they find maybe deficiencies in the sort of type of housing they were looking at? What they perhaps settled with? So we're going to gather some intelligence on the situation as it evolves in real time, which I think is a pretty smart move. Uh, Director Turner also informed the, com uh, the committee that there, is, there are some interested parties um, in the ether who are willing to develop in our community and we're going to pursue those leads and try our best to facilitate those, specifically with some housing incentives that will be coming to a council meeting to you shortly on how we can encourage some development in our community. Uh, we moved on to discussing the Pride Crosswalk um, with our local Pride Society, and I will be reporting more on that at, at their, our next uh, report to council from ECOM. Um, the Pride Society recently had an AGM, and their board, board of directors was brand new. They're actually having their meeting tonight, and the topic of a Pride crosswalk or a Pride feature in our community will be on that agenda, and we definitely look forward to talking with them post uh, their meeting tonight. Uh, now we'll move on to uh, social services, food security. Uh, we were very pleased to welcome Councillor Rudenberg to the committee for a uh, discussion about food security and the concern that there are growing gaps in our community over food security, especially with the cessation of the Good Cheer Hamper program, which is proving to be a major gap. Um, and although there are orga other organizations who are trying to fill that gap, it is not complete. So. This is something that Council will turn its gaze to in hopefully some form where perhaps we act as facilitators to groups and whatnot who may uh, offer solutions to um, address food security issues in the community as a whole. Um, and then, of course, uh, Council Rudenberg reminded us that the free Christmas Eve dinner is a go again this year, slightly different due to COVID, but uh, we're very happy that that is able to continue. And as in prior years, the city will help out with free bus service. And there is an item regarding the letter from the province regarding, regarding the COVID grant safe restart, but that's coming up later in the agenda tonight, so I'm not going to belabor that. And then the last thing we talked about was a Baker Creek update pertaining to the flooding that occurred earlier this year and uh, more or less the, the concern of future erosion issues on Baker Creek, the risk that poses to city infrastructure and property owners. So uh, we will be looking for a report from staff to bring council up to date uh, with all the particulars on that file. And then we have one uh, recommend or one uh, uh, recommendation I guess I'm seeking a motion for is to adopt the amended 2020-21 meeting schedule for ECOM. Um, actually sorry that's what that was moved by the mayor seconded by the city manager and that was carried unanimously but I believe I need a motion to for council to adopt that so I'll make that motion. Seconder. Seconder. Councilor Rundberg. Questions or comment? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. okay. Councilor Rundberg. Thank you. Just a quick update on the Christmas Eve dinner. Um, we have one more meeting coming up at the end of the month or beginning of December and uh, there'll be a poster coming out for the community to uh, update times and etc. So the timing here might be different from what the actual event is, but um, there will be information coming forward after our next um, planning meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and a couple of quick comments on the engagement piece. So if Council could uh, off of our social media page uh, promote the budget survey again. Um, I was talking to our communications clerk today and we're around just over 400 uh, participants with a couple of weeks uh, left uh, to gather that information. Last year we were I believe over 600 so if you can promote that and there is that video link uh, as Councillor Vic indicated, we are testing the video link, and so we did another one today. This will be the first one that aligns the column uh, with the video link, and it's just about where we're at with the COVID situation. Um, so as our communications clerk figures out how to use the video, if it looks like the video is a worthwhile tool for us, then I would like our standing committee chairs and council members who lead some of our initiatives to start using that as a tool to get more information out so that it's engagement with the community writ large. So we'll run a couple of trials with just the column 
uh, and the video link uh, to the column and then see if we if it's working we will expand it so that we can get more information out on our you know the whole range of initiatives that we've got on the go okay anything else councillor paul yeah thank you um a question to councillor vick um and this has to do with the um the, uh, the paragraph under housing action plan and and in particular the uh the quinell senior housing um demand survey which I participated in and an excellent survey uh, but it would be interesting to know and I, maybe I've already been told this how many respondents there were on that survey I think director Turner can correct me but it, it was almost 200 respondents I think it was 182 thank you that actually sounds a bit low from what I heard just earlier today but I'll I can get that and send that out I don't have the number right on the top of my head but it, I thought it was over 200 actually Thank you, and, and I really like the idea of, of as staff characterizes it, bolting um, a permanent survey to the, to the city website. And I think that that survey could go even further um, than, than questioning things on housing, but it could be on snow removal and all kinds of things. Yeah, we'll start with the housing and see what the management is uh, of it. But uh, I, there are tools out there, and we keep looking at these different tools for us to gather that kind of feedback. So, Councillor Paul, I think you're right. You know, if we can get in, in our inability right now to get out there, if we have these interactive tools, we should be using them. But right now, I think we'll see where we can get to with the housing one. So, okay, we good with that? All right. Um, with respect to the next item, uh, J1, so just uh, so Council's clear, there is a PABCOM um, uh, recommendation motion in, in front of you relative to this. So with respect to this, uh, for full transparency, uh, we thought uh, we should bring both the press release and the letter uh, forward uh, to Council. Uh, it's not directed to Council, it's directed to uh, Staff Sergeant uh, Darren Dodge uh, with our RCMP detachment, but as Council well knows, uh, the RCMP detachment is a function of the City of Quinell, uh, and so the action items in here are not directed at at the federal RCMP entity, they're di directed at our detachment and therefore they're directed at us. Um, Staff Sergeant Dodge met uh, with Chief LeBrun, uh, Chief uh, Roy Stump, uh, and Councillor Chad Stump, had a good uh, solid discussion about this. As you're all aware, with respect to the incident, it did not involve the RCMP. It was a private security individual. The RCMP did respond. However, the RCMP have indicated to the chiefs uh, that a full investigation of all aspects of that incident uh, will be conducted. Uh, and so that is underway, and the chiefs uh, were satisfied uh, that that full incident uh, uh, investigation will continue. What we discussed at PABCOM, though, is that, that uh, you know, as a council and as a corporate entity, we have advanced quite substantially uh, our desire to do First Nations recognition, first and foremost, reconciliation initiatives and partnerships. And I think we've advanced along that continuum quite significantly over the last uh, five, almost six years. Uh, well, actually, it is six years now. You know, we see it in our own uh, chamber. Uh, we see the gift exchange from our pro protocol agreement. We see the recognition. Uh, and we have some pretty active partnerships just now. If I, if I look at Lindsay and all the grant applications we've got in that involve uh, very robust uh, partnerships with First Nations. However, an unfinished piece of work is actually spoken to in the letter and while the letter directs it at the RCMP that they do something to adopt the UN Declaration and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, that actually is uh, uh, the purview of council. And we've talked about this in the last term. Uh, we didn't get there for a variety of reasons. Uh, but I think that that work of internalizing the UN Decla Declaration of Indigenous Rights and uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action is a piece of unfinished work uh, that we need to do. Uh, 
throughout the whole uh, Black Lives Matter and, and uh, racism initiatives that we have experienced over the course of the summer, uh, the question of uh, do you have a good anti-racism policy, are you doing uh, sensitivity training with staff around all aspects of, of systemic, systemic racism and unconscious uh, racism. Uh, came, uh, you know, to the uh, to a head, and you know, staff had advised me that one of the law firms that advises uh, local governments had actually distributed a draft anti-racism policy to look at. We looked at it at the time, and we thought that our HR policy had some of that embedded in it. But it may be time to revisit that and to come up with a strategy where we make sure that all of our departments, our city corporately, uh, and adjunct entities like uh, the RCMP detachment are covered uh, under that strategy. And then the final piece, and the CRD's done this, Williams Lake City Council has done this, is the training piece around sensitivity, around racism, and sensitivity around Indigenous culture and history. So that's the advice uh, from PABCOM uh, by way of a motion uh, is that we embark on that work. PABCOM would be the lead uh, for that. Uh, and if there's budget implications, send it to the finance, engagement implications, send it to the executive committee, et cetera. As we were working on this, I got a phone call on Sunday morning from Chief Lebrun. Uh, and Chief Lebrun uh, was simply asking, you, you know, for council to continue its work and for me as the mayor to join uh, him and the other chiefs on a statement that we are going to continue this work uh, together. And, you know, I, I said to staff as we were talking about this, you know, I, I don't think, you know, most of us uh, can understand the level of pain that exists in our Aboriginal community. I don't, I don't think, unless we've had that lived experience, we can really understand the true depths of that. And, and the conversation I have with Chief Lebrun really illustrated that. And when we get incidences like this, and it's not about the incident, it's about what the incident triggers. Uh, and it triggers that that pain that's there, it triggers that historic, uh, you know, extinguishment of rights. Uh, the attempt at extinguishment of a culture through the residential schools. And I think we need to do everything that we can to, to make that right in our generation. And these steps that are being recommended through PABCOM uh, to, to finish the work on the UN Declaration <coughs> and the Reconciliation Commission, to deepen our work on an anti-racism strategy, and also uh, to do some of the training that goes with that, I think are the right steps for Council to take. And so I would invite, you know, the chair of, of PABCOM is here. Uh, if you, uh, Councilor Runge, if you want to speak to this motion or to put the motion uh, forward on the floor, uh, that's really the piece of business that comes out of both the press release and the letter. Councilor Goulet. I'm moving Okay. I would like to speak to you. Yeah. Councilor Goulet moves, seconded. Councilor Runge. Councilor Goulet. Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Mayor. And uh, this is a uh, uh, quite timely. Uh, I think in building a relationship with our Aboriginal and First Nations um, communities, I think it's it's a really a timely uh, piece for me. I think it's been a long time coming to look at the racism within uh, within this. It's always been there. And the mayor uh, made a comment about when things happen, it does bring up in the Aboriginal community things that are beyond our control, things that have happened um, that we uh, really cannot uh, a, a fabricate as, a, as an individual, but that's stuck uh, with those Aboriginal people as they move forward. So I think it's, a, it's good to understand and do some training and really grasp what, what the issues are. You'll be really surprised. I think when you start talking to some of the elderly people and some of the, uh, of the residential school, and that's a big piece of this as well, you will, you will start to see a picture of how things came to be and where things are going. You'll see that they are open to um, talking and having that reconciliation. They're not against um, saying no, no, no. They're open. They're very open to start a dialogue and to begin something, right? Just where do we begin? We don't know and, and they don't know, right? They want it. They want to heal and they want to work with the powers that be to help them heal. So I think there's a huge, huge reconciliation piece that's that's coming and, and we're moving for it. And the younger generation is also 
understanding that and moving forward with that. So I think there's some huge speeches and I support this 100%. I think we're moving in the right direction. I think there'll be more to come as we work through this and understand what the UN Declaration of Rights really is and really says. There's lots of pieces in there that need to be dealt with from language, housing, social problems to the whole uh, nine yards. So we're just on the surface of something huge. So I just support this 100%. Thank you, Councillor Glake. Councillor Runch, did you want to speak? Or were you just seconding? No, I actually think I, I won't because both of you guys did it very eloquently already. Thank you. Councillor Paul? Uh, thank you. Um, I, I will be voting in favor of this. Um, however, um, I spent the best part of my afternoon uh, reading through um, the declaration and, and a lot of the background information, and, and I'm still not really clear on on how or what the obligations of the corporation would be if we do sign on to this and I'm puzzled at I don't I don't know why the federal government hasn't signed on and the provincial government has has signed on and um, I don't know if there's anything coming out of the UBCM as far as um, any guidance or, or recommendations that, that that we could follow and, and with respect to um, to bullet three in that in that motion, I'd like to see uh, some reference in there th that that we're cognizant of other visible minorities in addition to uh, indigenous. I think it extends through all of society, and it's not just for um, the indigenous population. So. Councillor Paul, on that point, I want to make it clear to you and to others, that's why it reads, develop and adopt an anti-racism strategy. It doesn't say an anti-indigenous racism strategy. And the, sec the third bullet, uh, there's an and, so conduct anti-racism sensitivity training. So that's the generic anti-racism and improve the knowledge of staff and council regarding local indigenous culture and history. Okay, so it does capture that racism goes beyond indigenous population in our community. Thank you, and I was fully expecting you to catch me on that, um, but I, I, all I'm saying is that um, I believe that there should be at least some reference in there to, to other visible minorities. Okay, so the motion is as it is, unless you're putting forward an amendment uh, to the motion. Uh, but I think inherent, as I indicated, inherent in the reason that anti-racism is expressed the way that it is, it captures uh, racism writ large, right? Uh, so, Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you. Um, in regards to UBCM, we don't have anything that is um, written down. We, there has been lots of discussion. The one piece that I can uh, point in your direction actually has come from FCM, and they've just uh, released a, a paper called Economic Recovery and Resilience, a Guide for First Nation Municipal Collaboration, and it's on the FCM website, and it talks about um, how to uh, build stronger together, and it's a toolkit, and it's something that's been in the works for the past year or so uh, with members from across Canada. So it, it's um, a piece that I've actually already sent to the mayor and uh, to the PAPCOM committee just to kind of go through. And it, it might help a little bit understanding how they how collaboration can work, but I totally agree that there there's lots that as council we can do, and I think that um, if we have an opportunity to do some kind of understanding of what um, you know even the local history and culture is about, and how that plays into everything that happens in our community. I think we're better people for it. And um, Councillor Goulet, um, your words were very well and deeply spoken, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Just to close off on this uh, so that we're crystal clear to Councillor Paul's point, this is actually just a work plan, right? So we're not adopting anything. We're not committing to anything. This is a work plan. It will go to PABCOM, and PABCOM will do this work and bring it back to council. So we'll all have an opportunity to vest as this evolves. I do believe there's a local government uh, guidebook uh, to both the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples and the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. I remember reading it 
and sending it to council three years ago or so. Uh, and then again, I think it was in council's information package. So we'll dig that up. Uh, but, uh, you know, we'll, this is a work piece uh, for us to undertake. Today, we're just making the commitment to do the work. The other piece that I would like to point out to Council is that we're in an ideal situation for the latter half of Bullet 3 uh, in terms of increasing the knowledge of staff and Council regarding local Indigenous culture and history. And it was a, a, a substantial part of my conversation uh, with uh, Chief Lebrun and also with Chief Stump because, of course, we've put a letter in regarding the Sokotin Chief's memorial site, etc. Uh, and one of the grant applications we just were awarded has enabled us to really dig in uh, on this and to capture elder stories and to make sense out of this from part of our transition strategy. So we're in an ideal situation to basically translate that into education and training for ourselves in the community. So, so I think that I agree with uh, Council Goulet. The timing is right for us to uh, finesse this, and it's I would argue it's just part of a continuous improvement of an ongoing process we've had over the last six years with our First Nations communities uh, in the area. So. So with that, I will call the vote. Uh, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that's carried unanimously. Thank you, everybody. Okay, next item. Uh, the COVID uh, free money, I mean the COVID uh, restart money. Count, uh, uh, City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Actually, Director Bolton's gonna go through this report since she compiled it. Okay, Director Bolton. Thank you. So the purpose of this report is to discuss the COVID safe restart grant received by the City of Quinnell and possible uses for the funds based on the eligible costs outlined by the province. So the City of Quinnell will be receiving $2.5 million under the COVID safe restart grant for local governments. The funding is to support local governments as they deal with increased operating costs and lower revenue due to COVID-19. So eligible costs include addressing revenue shortfalls, facility reopening and operating costs, emergency planning and response costs, bylaw enforcement and protective services, computer and other electronic technology costs, services for vulnerable persons, and other related costs. So I have made a draft list of potential uses that's attached to this report. It's just a draft list at this point, just going through our budget challenges and some of the area projects that fit the funding requirements. So the first section kind of addresses the loss of revenue. The largest one for us is the ongoing loss of casino funds. So generally we use about 500,000 a year of casino funds to fund our general capital projects. So without those funds, it's a tough for us to balance our capital budget. We've also talked about the other revenues we've lost, the airport and just other areas like North Caribou Rec. So just the loss of operating revenues and extra COVID costs would have likely resulted in an estimated 3.5% tax increase next year to make up for it and potentially even higher tax increase would have been required to cover the needed capital projects no, no longer have casino funding. This grant offsets that potential tax increase. And then in addition to all that, the North Caribou Joint Advisory Committee requested that the City and the Caribou Regional District contribute funds to North Caribou Recreation and Services to backstop the budget to prevent service reductions from having to occur in January 2021 to balance the budget. I've included their recommendation from that report. So in the rec recommendations, I'm asking for Council to approve some upfront. These ones affect our current budget and our current year end. And then asking that the rest go to FSAC for discussion as part of the 2021 budget. So that we can work through it and find if there's other things we want to look at, et cetera, because there's still more funds here. So the, rec the first recommendation is that Council approve the following allotments for the COVID-19 Safe Restart Grant up to 905,000 to replace lost casino funds in 2020-2021 to be used for general capital projects. So of course, if the casino reopens, we might not need that much, but this is just assuming that we might need up to that much. Up to 30,000 to cover the anticipated airport deficit in 2020, 82,000 to cover the airport capital allocations that would have been made in 2020 if revenue was sufficient, up to 200,000 to cover the anticipated general operating deficit in 2020, and 80,000 for the Chamber Tech Project that had previously been funded by Council Projects. And that Council recommends that the Financial and Sustainability Audit Committee review and discuss the rest of the proposed uses of the fund during the budget 2021 process. Okay, so let's leave, yeah. leave it at that recommendation just now and uh, any kind of, let's have a general discussion and then come back to the first recommendation. So any sort of questions around the nature of the funding or the recommendation 
for these early adoption because it just gives Director Bolton the ability to plan our budget forward yes. more cleanly than if we wait for it to cycle through the budget process and come back and it's a big question mark around these funds, okay? Uh, Councillor Runge. So correct me if I'm wrong, but my question comes from actually what Councillor Vic was saying before with regards to Baker Creek. Uh, do we have a potential shortfall there that some of this might be already used for? I guess this would be a question to uh, Director So you're Bolden. talking about the flooding at Baker Creek? Uh, well, we know yeah. that some of the flooding is already covered, but there is, uh, you know, maybe there's something that will mitigate issues next year and one of the one of the bullets is uh, emergency planning and response costs and the question is should we be allocating some to that so that that those projects will come forward in the capital plan we do have funds available in the sewer reserve to cover a lot of those costs as you remember we increased sewer fees five percent just because we knew that there would be additional costs due to that project so that'll all come forward as part of the capital budget that FSAC will see here this next week this next week Yes, yeah, so, the, so the areas, and we're tracking that, the areas where we've got uncertainties around utilization will be part of our budget process. And you can see, you know, below the line of backfilling, there's still quite a bit to play with. Even if we funded all of the things that uh, Director Bolton sort of tagged, there's still 350000 uh, there to fund. Um, so the, the uncertainty around that uh, is um, going to be covered in the budget process. Okay, so it is a tagged area for us to look at. Okay, other questions or comments? City Manager. Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to add a couple of comments. It's interesting because in uh, Director Bolton's report where she talked about what the eligible costs are, those eligible costs are actually a direct quote from the award letter from the province. So what is not included in those eligible costs is creation of a rainy day fund or, cre or creating tax relief specifically just with the idea of relieving taxes for our taxpayers. And yet, when you hear about how other municipalities are handling these grants, th those two topics come up quite often. So it's a bit of a trap that council could fall into thinking, hey, let's save the money in case it gets worse. That is not the intent. And when we get funding from any higher levels of government, we, it behooves us to try to follow their directions as what the intent behind those funds are. Thank you. On the recommendation, what we're effectively saying is of the 2.5, 1.3 million is going to be going to backstopping these specific items. And then uh, we've got another discussion around 200,000, but the rest of it is part of our budget process and we can deal with it in our budget process. And I think the city manager is bang on when we were having this discussion at the CRD, one of the things I pointed out to the CRD board, and our council should be paying attention to it as well, is the dialogue and debate currently going on between the federal government and the promise, uh, provinces about the transfer of COVID-related monies from the feds to the province. And the provinces are now coming back and saying, we need more, and the feds are saying, yeah, we don't like the way you spent the first batch uh, we gave you, and we especially don't like the ones that parked it, and you've got it in the bank account, and you've got your hand out for more, right? So I think we have to look at it through the spirit and intent. You know, throughout the early part of the COVID process, we were on weekly phone calls with Minister Selena Robinson for Municipal Affairs and Housing. The Premier would join us, Minister Farnworth would join us, and every local government was saying, we need money for this, we need money for that, we're losing revenue on this, we're incurring costs on that. They've called their bluff. <laughs> they put it in front of us, and if we end up turning around and saying, we need a reserve for this, we need a rainy day fund for that, we've just called ourselves liars. So we have to deploy these funds in a way uh, that actually do what the province intended it to be done, which is the backstop buzz uh, for COVID-related expenses and loss of revenue. Councillor Rudenberg. Thank you. And I think um, what uh, Mr. Johnson has said is really important first to understand, as you've said, uh, Mayor Simpson, um, on a call today. And there are communities who are completely kind of go, well, we don't know how to spend this money. Like, we're, we don't want to spend it wrong. Um, we're not given any direction. But it's kind of like, and so the whole idea of kind of just sitting on it. 
Um, and I've said that that's not that should not be the way that you use this money. It's there to restart what's going on, what has kind of been held back. And you know, at the FCM level, they're asking for more restart money. Like it's a big ask for the next round because we they didn't have a budget. The feds didn't have a budget this year, and so you know they're asking for restart money in their upcoming budget discussions. So if we don't use it, like the mayor says, we're not going to get any more. Can we make a note to get that? Or thank you. Bit of bit of static there. So thank you for that. So on this motion, uh, Councilor Goulet. Thank you. I just had a, a question looking at the eligible costs, and one of them says services for vulnerable persons. Are they looking at um, housing, or what are they looking at for services? Are they looking at food security? Are they looking at for different things for the vulnerable population? That one just kind of stuck me out as an eligible cost for this COVID money. Yeah, and again, it doesn't come with explanatory notes, uh, you know, in the letter. It does tag that, and it talks about... Uh, I did have the letter on my iPad, but I didn't bring my iPad in. Uh, City Manager? Thank you. So under that category, it says services for vulnerable persons, e.g. persons living with disabilities, mental illness or addictions, persons experiencing homelessness or other vulnerabilities. So you'll see in the list that, again, this is just... Uh, me working with staff and, and getting some general ideas to put in front of the finance uh, committee uh, for deliberation. But as an example, uh, one area of vulnerability uh, that we know we had during the COVID piece and is an ongoing area of vulnerability uh, is this issue of, of more uh, public washrooms uh, easily and readily available. And when we looked at it as a finance committee, those things to do them right are very expensive and very hard for us to pick up. And during the early days of COVID, we got hammered pretty hard for not having accessible washrooms and sani stations in the community. So tagging some of the capital associated with that so that we address that you know, on a more permanent basis. Uh, and then if you take a look at the bottom there, the possibility of engaging with our seniors uh, council and stabilizing them with some funding uh, because they're in the process of trying to get the lottery status. They've done all that housing uh, work uh, that we've asked them to do and so on. So giving them some stability and funding so they can continue their good work. And then we are in dialogue just now um, with the not-for-profit association trying to understand what their needs are around food security, things like that. So that's a piece of work that, that the finance committee will take on and if you've got thoughts around that uh, Councillor Gillet let uh, Councillor Elliott know and feed it into the process okay and you're a member of that committee as well okay other questions or comments on this okay so on the recommendation and again what it effectively does is puts 1.3 of the 2.5 directly towards that first you know key piece addressing revenue shortfalls uh, and of course the facility reopening uh, opening costs etc uh, that uh, will allow director bolton then to develop a budget uh, with certainty around that can I have a motion to that effect mm -hmm. councillor elliott so moved councillor run second any further questions or comments all in favor any opposed <laughs> carried okay then the second recommendation so the second re recommendation is just from the joint planning recommendation. So that council approve up to 200,000 to be used from the city's COVID-19 safe restart grant to offset the reduced revenue in the North Caribou Recreation and Services budget, preventing service reductions if required. Okay, so we, we currently have a joint advisory committee. I have, I have to keep reframing that uh, in my head uh, with the new acronym. Um, uh, so it went to the CRD board on Friday, uh, the recommendation for them to use 200,000 of their 867,000 that the CRD got. Uh, but the report basically was a report from the CAO for that board to not have their COVID uh, restart funding discussion until January of next year. Uh, and that discussion became a discussion, unfortunately, of whether this was an appropriate use of that fund and so on. So we successfully managed to pull their 
actual discussion about how they would use that money uh, to mid-December. However, for us as a council, you know, my suggestion to council is if our spirit and intent as partners in the North Caribou Recreation function was to prevent layoffs, uh, to stabilize the schedule for the rec function, and to backfill lost revenue to allow that function to come back up during this first COVID winter, then we're committed to $200,000 regardless regardless of whether the CRD is coming in or not uh, we had said that we would be willing to put 200,000 in we can make a decision earlier than them and if the decision is made by us of providing up to 200,000 of our 2.5 million towards the recreation budget then we uh, achieve our intention of stabilizing that staff stabilizing the schedule, allowing the rec function to continue to attract people back into it as we get through this winter, and then let the CRD deal uh, with their situation uh, in December. So I think it's a, it's a wash for us, you know, whether we do it lockstep with the CRD or whether we just do it, we had committed 200,000 either way. Uh, and we also get to just simply fast track our decision. So what's the will of council uh, on this? Okay, Councillor Elliott. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. It was uh, an interesting and constructive conversation that we had with the, the uh, Northern Directors. And we all agreed unanimously to, to backstop and stabilize the rec centre, which I feel is extremely important for our community. Um, I think people need to have a, a little bit of normal out there and be able to go to uh, the pool and the, the rec centre in general. Um, so. I'm confused as to why it was a unanimous decision here and now it's been turned around at their end. That's something that's out of uh, our control, out of my control, um, but I would move this recommendation for exactly what you've said and uh, just the stability of, of that rec center and, and the staffing levels and how important it is to our community and hopefully um, the CRD turns around and, and gives us that money to, to help backstop as well. But I think we're using the, the funds exactly has that it's been put forward to us. So I'd like to continue with that. Can so I have move a seconder? There. Councilor Runge, seconding? Okay. Other comments, questions? Councilor Runge? Yeah, and I'd like to add to it because we did have that discussion there at the joint planning meeting where I was hesitant originally. But, you know, going back and thinking about it and thinking about our rec center, I, I was actually surprised to get that email about the uh, change of heart from the Northern Directors even at this stage because this rec center services so many people around what I consider Quinnell, but it's actually Quinnell and all these regional districts around here. And I actually always look at us as as one big, you know, well, family's the wrong word, but you know, but so so for me, you know, it's a given that we have to uh, keep, keep this going. And as I, you know, I spoke with my daughter also, and as they as they try to get their heads wrapped around all this and want to work out, they need these types of places. So it's also for the kids in this community and our community. I mean, I don't mean just Quinell, I mean the surrounding area also. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, and, and for clarity, a decision hasn't been made, so the board will take a look at the full funds and at our request uh, at their Dece December special uh, meeting. So uh, hopefully uh, that we'll be able to redress that issue then. Okay, so on the motion, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you, Council. Uh, next, then, uh, more grants. Okay, <laughs> our community development coordinator, it's too long a title and CDC doesn't really work. It has too many acronyms have no. that, so. Lindsay, go ahead. Okay, the purpose of this report is to gain council's approval to submit an application to Northern Development Initiative Trust's economic infrastructure stream for the Shirawi House Commercial Readiness Renovations Project and to the um, Community Places stream for the Riverfront Trail Network Wayfinding Project. For the Shirawi House improvements, this project will see renovations to the Shirawi House to prepare it for co future commercial business operations, which will enable the city to lease the building to commercial tenants with a specific aim at food and beverage, beverage businesses. Um, the improvements include gas line improvements, exterior patio heat and light, electrical and plumbing upgrades, Wi-Fi and USB upgrades, a wall removal, an interior wall removal, 
um, exterior electric capabilities, floor replacement, and exterior paint and improvements. For the Riverfront Trail Wayfinding Project, this project will add on will add on browning wayfind, wayfinding around the Riverfront Trail system. The wayfinding design is based on the 2018 wayfinding strategy and will complement vehicular wayfinding and downtown pedestrian wayfinding. The project includes 60 new posts with wayfinding to landmarks, up to three new kiosks with updated masks displayed in the kiosks, and content replaced on all existing kiosks with updated masks and bylaw uh, maps and bylaw information. Uh, is there any questions? No. Let's deal with uh, the recommendations and okay. one at a time. Recommendation number one that Cornell City Council supports the application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust Economic Infrastructure Stream for a grant up to $75,780 from the Caribou Chilcotin Lillooet Regional Development Fund for the Shirawi House Commercial Readiness Renovations Project and that Cornell City Council approves the use of $32,477.55 from the 2021 operating budget to cover the city's contribution. Councillor Elliott so moved. Councillor Vic second. Any questions or comments? Councillor Paul? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in the recommendation that said that um, up to um, $75,780, so if the grant is somewhat less than that, does that still mean that we contribute the $32,000? Um, we have applied for the $75,780. Eighty dollars. It was. I was when I was typing this report. We were unclear as to what the budget was yet. It was a very short time frame for the grant, so I just put the maximum. But that's what we ended up applying for, anyways. So okay, that that doesn't answer my question though. But but if they if they approve, say half of that, are we still on the hook for thirty two thousand um, dollars? They would either approve it or not approve it but no we would be on the hook for um 30 percent yeah okay any other questions or comments on that okay all in favor any opposed carried thank you next one that Quinell City Council supports the application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust Community Places Stream for a grant up to $30,000 from the Caribou Chilcotin Lillooet Regional Development Fund for the Riverfront Trail Network Wayfinding Project, and that Quinell City Council approves the use of $36,153.72 from the 2021 operating budget to cover the city's contribution. And Lindsay Fork clarity on this one and correct me if I'm wrong this is a substantive savings over the original uh, proposal and we found a local supplier uh, for the post is that correct um, to be honest I'm, I'm not quite sure okay. Amy was dealing with the quotes I believe that that's correct right city manager thank you mr. mayor yes we have found a local supplier we've changed the uh, product spec a little bit to downsize it so instead of the six by six posts it reduces that somewhat but local supplier which serves us in good stead moving forward as we need to add signage we'll be able to order it and have it on the ground much sooner as well as of course it provides local employment yeah and again pretty substantive savings over the original design and that's why uh, we feel comfortable advancing it at this time so okay um, so on this can I have a motion uh, Councillor Rudenberg so moved Councillor yeah. Elliott questions or comments all in favor any opposed carried thank you Lindsay okay and you're up again the purpose of this report is to gain council's approval to submit applications to the following northern development initiative trust programs for the local government intern the economic development capacity building and the grant writer support um, these are, are all programs that the city applies to every single year for annual funding and they fund my position um, the economic development manager of economic developments position and the intern position so recommendation number one that Quinell City Council supports the application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust for the $50,000 economic development capacity building grant from the Pine Beetle recovery account Councillor Ryan so move Councillor Rudenberg second any questions or comments all in favor any opposed carried recommendation number two 
that Cornell City Council supports the application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust for the $8,000 grant writing support grant from the Cross Regional ac Account. Sorry. And that Quinnell City Council approves the use of 2500 from the 2021 operating budget to cover the city's contribution. Yeah, and Lindsay, just, just so we're clear and transparent, this is for a portion of your salary, not the whole meal deal, as uh, <laughs> might have been suggested. Otherwise, you're grossly underpaid. So, yeah, yeah um, it's a portion. <laughs> Any opposed? Carried. Okay, next. Recommendation number three, that Quinnell City Council supports the application to the Northern Development Initiative Trust for a grant of up to $35,000 to host an intern under the Local Government Management Intern Program from the Cher Caribou Chilcotin Lillooet Northern Development Regional Development Account and that Cornell City Council is committed to providing sufficient financial and staffing resources to host an intern and is committed to providing training and exposure opportunities for an intern, and that Cornell City Council approves the use of $14,000 from the 2021 and 2022 operating budget to cover the city's contribution. Okay, can I have a motion to that effect? Councillor Run, so moved. Councillor Rudenberg, second. And just uh, again on this one, uh, this isn't necessarily an annual uh, one, right? Because some some years were disqualified uh, from applying. So, Director Bolton, this 14K would be put into next year's uh, budget, right? Because we don't carry that 14 every year, right? So, it would be added as a supplemental item in this budget. But it is a great program for us, uh, and you know I think it's great for both the interns and for us. Uh, we've always gotten really interesting and innovative work out of uh, these interns. So, cool. Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a question on the second bullet there, committed to providing sufficient financial and staffing resources. An example? Please. Yeah, so it's just the way, it's the context that we put the person in. We don't isolate them, you know, give them a filing job in a corner and let them spend the summer filing. And we actually have a, a, a very strong track record of putting pretty high demands on some of these folks and giving them all the supports to rise up. And, you know, I don't think, I don't think the new council has experienced an intern yet, have you? No. Very early, I think, very early in the term, but you'll see, uh, depending on the nature of the intern, if we're successful in getting the program, they'll start participating in our committees, they'll start doing that kind of work. That's what's meant by that. We make a commitment to provide that kind of learning environment for them. Okay. So on the motion, all those in favor? Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. And again, Lindsay, thanks for all the work. I know uh, the uh, the list of grants that you've got pending and, and working on, I know, is very long. So thank you for that. Okay. Uh, next, then, uh, Cornell District Senior Society. Thank you for iPads. Ms. Albers. Thank you, Mayor. Council has received a thank you from the Quinell and District Senior Society for the 12 iPads the city gave to this group. Seniors are learning how to use this equipment and are playing bridge and hopefully in the future crib and scrabble. <laughs> yeah, I just can't wait until it's my turn. I'm getting there. I got my OAP notification. <laughs> Like, you know you've arrived uh, when you get your OAP notification. Um, okay, uh, the next one's uh, for information for council. It's the actual uh, notice and uh, the press release uh, around uh, the grant uh, that we got for the Riverfront Trail. Uh, and as I indicated before, uh, there's three parts to this. Uh, it's the walking uh, bridge or the footbridge uh, renewal, uh, the indigenous interpretive elements, and then the lighting. And all three parts uh, were approved, so kudos to staff. And I know a lot of work was done back and forth with the Northern Development Trust on advancing this. Uh, the reason I've got it here is you can see the, the scope of the other projects from Northern Rockies, City of Prince Rupert, Village of McBride that were also funded as part of strategic initiatives. I was asked by both the CEO of Northern Development Trust and the chair uh, about you know, how we're able to advance year over year regardless of circumstances these kinds of innovative projects because this is three years in a row we've been successful 
and the first year was coming out of a wildfire season the second year was coming out of a meltdown in the forest sector and this year is in the middle of covid uh, and I guess it came up at the board discussion as well about, you know, Quinnell getting the lion's share of this fund every year. It's only been in existence for three uh, years. And, and my comment to them is, is it's again because we have a council that has adopted overarching strategies and we have a staff that's able to take those stat strategies and turn them into projects. And without those overarching strategies, we would be lurching just like was before, where a grant comes up and then you're scrambling to try and figure out how to get the grant in, and you're scrambling to try and figure out how to get your proportional share of the grant. So our success in getting grants is, is a testament to the proactive nature of the leadership of council and, and the staff's uh, ability to actually turn council's uh, you know, desires and vision into actual projects. And this is a testament to that. So, so as a consequence, this, this grant initiative is going to continue. So we have another opportunity next year uh, and see if we can you know, keep, keep on uh, a good track record. So for everybody's edification, year one was the hosting precinct around the arena. Uh, so that it integrated all the arena, Arena 2, West Fraser Centre curling rink, and created that precinct and allowed us to host uh, the uh, curling uh, championships the way we did. Year 2 is the work that's being done on Spirit Centre uh, and the refurbishing of that space. And as we heard tonight, uh, the BIA talking about a live after five, that will be the host uh, for that activity. And then this year, getting into the waterfront trail. So uh, uh, excellent work by our staff to advance those projects. Okay, any questions or comments on that item? All right, and then the uh, next item, uh, Ms. Albers. Thank you, Mayor. Um, the North Caribou Seniors has sent Council a letter notifying Council that $50 is being requested for the City's 2021 corporate membership. I know, exorbitant. Um, so, so <laughs> this was this this is being done at my request. Uh, when I did uh, my column on seniors a couple of weeks ago, and I was looking at uh, trying to promote the AGM for the council and the work of the council. When I went on their website, I realized uh, that they're now as a standalone entity. They now have memberships and we should be a corporate member uh, and so I reached out to Councillor Vic and said oops uh, we helped to originate uh, that council and we're no longer members of that council maybe we should redress that so it needs to come to us as a request and then we actually because it's not in our regular membership cycle in our budget we have to initiate that with a, uh, a motion of council okay Councillor Paul does that then mean that this will be automatic? I, I'm, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, going to our community part of our budget in future years. So can I have a motion then? Councillor Rudenberg, Councillor Vic, uh, any questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. And then the final item of correspondence. Thank you, Mayor. The Baker Creek Enhancement Society is requesting a letter of support for the Society's Work BC grant application to a community for a community garden at 601 Johnson Avenue that is currently owned by the Society. For Director Turner to take a look and make sure there were no issues with this, uh, and, and Director Turner. Thank you. No, there's not. This is really an initial step for them to just gain an individual to really plan out a garden area. Um, we've discussed that in the future they may look to coming to the city. There is uh, parkland that abut it. The, uh, the, her, this particular property that they own that they may at some point ask to have some encroachment on to expand the garden. But uh, that's that will be a decision for later. Okay. So, Councillor Paul. Now, thank you to staff. I presume there's water service there then. Correct, there's a house. Uh, for council's edification, that's the house that Baker Creek bought, so it's got the um, proper services from there. Okay, any other questions or comments? So can I have a motion to provide a letter of support then? Councillor Runge, so move. Councillor Elliott, second. Uh, any further questions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? Carried. 
Okay, uh, with respect to no changes to upcoming meetings, I am making a change to a committee appointment. I've asked Councillor Rudenberg uh, to join us on the executive uh, committee, and executive committees are by appointment of, of the mayor, so Councillor Rudenberg will be joining ECOM, and Ms. Albers can reflect that in our committee membership. Uh, any announcements, future events? Seeing none. Any gallery questions? Seeing none. Okay, I'll invite a motion to adjourn. Councillor Elliott, so moved. Councillor Run, second. All in favor? Any opposed? Thank you, Council. Thank you, staff.